very 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 good evening very good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you this webinar is a free webinar on japanese candlestick analysis and all of you over here have been following me on various social media platforms those who are seeing this on youtube you can track and follow technically sorted on various social media platforms the entire movement the entire core value on the basis of which technically sorted started and a little bit about me a little bit about me i'm a financial trader and i train people on how to trade the markets as a financial trader who started out very very young right the moment right at the moment i joined college actually there has been uh, a quite a journey in the beginning of my journey like many of you or probably all of you i made and those fair share of mistakes and i learned from them in fact the first few ventures of mine were a complete flop but those are the pillars and those are the medals i carry with myself carry with myself and the learnings which they have given me proved me to take up more education extensive as well as intensive and i ended up doing my higher studies in the field of finance with the courses which are the best in their field like chartered financial analyst and chartered market technician i learned from these courses and i must tell all of you that how much ever these degrees or these qualifications would seem to be for everybody else uh, your qualifications are not so important your confidence is qualifications can help you prove the world that yes i have cleared this exam once i have cleared an exam i have that qualification forever but doing the hard work doing the work day in and day out putting in the sincerity passion dedication in a very different way over a long haul is what always matters in any business trading is a business trading should be perceived as a business now many of you who may not be coming from the background where you started from a as a financial professional in the financial industry maybe you just thought that i have some spare money i feel that i'm good at my brain work and i like the puzzle solving and the passion behind tracking the markets is there so let me try my hand in trading now you see opening a business is very easy you need a current account you need a probably a trade license an office and you open a business but running a business and growing a business is difficult this is what i realized uh, at my very early age and at that very early age also i realized as i grew up that things become difficult for people as money gets into the picture very importantly in their life okay i have not changed the screen don't worry mr chetanya don't worry okay so as i grew up i also realized and as i met more people i realized the the things they were perturbed with mostly was trading psychology not just the strategy and in my education also formal education also trading psychology was given a lot of importance behavioral finance is a very new in terms of the number of years it has been behavioral finance is also very important and new um, branch of finance which is there so over the years as i learned how to trade as i learned a, a lot of self taught things i was lucky and very fortunate to work with some very good traders i have worked in different top trading firms i have been a technical analyst in a firm and broadly mostly i have been trading for myself and after some years of you know understanding trading in a deeper way i merged my talent and skill you can say of public speaking with and the compassion i have for teaching people uh, with my learning and knowledge over here and in the last four and a half years or so technically sorted has come up we started with one free seminar in calcutta and then i have done workshops all over the country i have done Uh, courses both offline and online and technically sorted the name of the brand and technically sorted is the flagship course which i broadly teach 
Okay. There are other courses also I teach, which go deeper into one or two aspects, which I'll share with you later. But technically, Shorter is our flagship course. We have had hundreds of students, and we have a lot of students coming to us. And I'm very, very glad to see the kind of ambitious people I'm surrounded with. And whenever you have a journey, okay, you always want that. Suppose somebody who is very young comes to me. I have always wanted that these are the people who should get what I had yearned for when I started. What would be the best for me when I started? So the learning pace goes much quicker and much deeper, much clearer for a lot of people. That is the only purpose that there is. Now, a lot of people who follow on social media platforms can attend these kind of free webinars. I welcome all of you. There are a lot of YouTube videos which are there. You can check all of that out. And eventually, you will understand that, you know, there is an entire ocean of knowledge which is available. I must also warn you, which I have realized, is that a lot of content on trading on the internet otherwise, uh, a lot of content on trading is basically bullshit just to get people impulsive and excited okay to incite people i would say don't fall that don't fall for that understand that it is a long-term process it is a skill building okay and then forge ahead today our discussion will be broadly based on japanese candlestick analysis and what japanese candlestick analysis stand for okay so let's understand candlesticks in a very different way First of all, and I will be keep, keeping dabbling between your broader aspects of trading in order to just give you a flavor of how you should perceive candlesticks, right? So starting with the very basic idea of candlesticks, how it started, okay? So Mr. Steve Nissen, and also I have uh, learned from Mr. Steve Nissen, uh, who is the person who has brought candlesticks from Japan to the USA, to the United States. So back in the days, more than about 300 years back, what used to happen is that rice was a tradable commodity in Japan and they used to trade rice like as if it was on an exchange, okay? And they had these coupons or they had these tickets which were tradable and they would go up and down in pricing they were very astutely intellectual and intellect, intelligent people. So they would find these patterns through the candlestick charts. That is how candlestick charts actually came up. So Mr. Steve Nissen's while interaction, well, while his interaction with a broker in Japan came across candlesticks and did a very big research behind it. And later got it to USA. Ever since candlesticks have been in, introduced to the broader public all over the world, candlesticks have been something which are extremely, extremely, extremely useful. They are used almost everywhere. You don't see those line charts with closing prices. I mean, you go to a bank, you go to a fundamental analyst doing a research on certain thing which requires the various data points. Many of them, uh, and obviously all traders, they are using candlestick charts. Okay, I don't know a single trader who does not use candlestick charts, right? So candlesticks can be extremely useful and we will understand why they have been given that priority. And behind the small essence, which I believe when I teach technical analysis, when I've understood technical analysis, behind all the small essence are hidden the mystery and the truth behind every concept. And I like to go by the essence of things which brings me closer to the truth. So I got introduced, I got introduced to candlestick, I got to introduce to technical analysis actually from a book uh, which was there at my home, uh, bought by my father. And I was very excited to see how creative, at the same time, how lucrative this could be. Just like many of you, I also came for the money aspect to a certain degree. And then when I fell in love with this subject, I realized that it was not just about the money. It was money was just a byproduct and it was about far more deeper things. So candlestick was one of the first concepts I got introduced to. And I explored it quite deeply. 
so in the beginning when i saw the candlestick patterns which a lot of people already coming over here have heard of or know about i saw that i was not getting the results which i wanted how many of you have used candlesticks knowledge and not got the results which you wanted can you raise your hands please can you raise your hands how many of you have used candlesticks but have not got the results which you have wanted i'm asking a very general question okay right some of you quite a few of you actually i can see that so what happened with me also was a similar kind of thing and i used to spend a lot of sleepless nights trying to understand this aspect of candlesticks and what am i going to do with my career if i don't get this right i began to use certain deeper knowledge i began to filter out certain things i began to use other concepts in conjunction with candlesticks which made the entire journey more meaningful later while in my chartered market technician course uh while i was doing that i i learned more about candlesticks and amongst my analyst friends and analyst associates i would see them also complain about certain things that candlesticks were not serving them and i shared with them my knowledge about candlesticks and shared with them that how one should look at certain candlesticks and ignore certain candlesticks and that was the first time when somebody told me that you should start teaching people because you go deeper and explain very well i mean it was also a kind of patience you have to have with other people while you are teaching them so that was something which was a very important part of the journey so let's understand what these candlesticks are about and why uh, they are given so much importance to okay for that we will look into the anatomy of a candle when you really want to get into something you have to go one step closer one step deeper and cut open the smaller important fragments which the particular variable is trying to show the anatomy of a candlestick right if i see a green candle or a red candle like we see over here okay if i see a green candle like this or a red candle like this i must understand that these are not just green and red lines on the screen they have a meaning if i start to look at this red candle for example the entire place where you see this red color this rectangular space this is called the real body okay and this is the distance between the open and the close when the candle is red in color the distance between open and the close means that the close is much lower than the open so at whatever price the market has closed at whatever price the market is closed it has closed much below compared to where it opened and these two wicks you see these two are also called shadows upper and lower shadow or upper and lower wick they are basically the high and low for the day so how do you perceive this how do you perceive this so let me make you understand by splitting open this particular candle now we have seen that for every time frame you can find candlestick charts you can find a candlestick chart for the smaller time frame or the bigger time frame for the daily chart and the weekly chart and the 15 minute chart and the hourly chart every time frame suppose this is a daily chart and i am going to get into the intraday chart suppose this is the daily chart and i am going to get into the intraday chart if i am going to open this day and see how a 5 minute chart would look like or a 1 minute chart would look like how would it actually look like so the price would open somewhere like this over here during the day it would have touched a certain high now however it unfolded and touched the high that's a different matter during the day it would have been a certain low and it would have come up and closed a little higher okay and this would be the open in that case i'm marking it with the o this should be the high and this would be the low and this would be the close right i'm trying to make it as simple to, as possible for everybody to understand not all of you are equipped with 
prior knowledge or not all of you are part of my student group or anything so please bear with everyone we are going at a slower pace just to make everybody understand it clearly so this is the open this is the high this is the low and this is the close so this entire candlestick when i look at this daily chart candle which is this red candle basically if i look at this i can imagine in my mind more or less what is the entire action of the day look like the entire action of the day basically looks like somewhere around this okay what else could be it also could be that it has opened and it has gone down a little bit then it has gone much higher and then it has gone lower and then it is gone pulled back a little and closed here so the way it would have unfolded within the candle that's a different matter but we will get a very good idea about the price action of the day by looking at one candlestick we get a pretty clear idea right by looking at one candlestick what the price action of the day would look like so we have these different time frames and in any time frame if i may split it up to a, split it open in a, a smaller time frame you would get a similar essence right now all of you can see that one thing is pretty clear if there is a big red candle or if there is a big green candle if there is a big red candle or if there is a big green candle we can perceive one thing that during the day the market has given a relatively big movement during the day the market has been some sort of a one sided movement some sort of a volatility has been there volatility does just does not mean that the market is going down market can be going up and it can be volatile volatility is standard deviation volatility means one sided movement okay ek tarfa movement jaise ek tarfa pyar waise ek tarfa movement all right so if i have to open up a chart and i see that there has been a candle on the daily chart which is a big red candle then obviously obviously one thing is pretty clear that the during the day there has been certain degree of volatility so i'm opening this chart right here in front of you this is the chart of ultra tech cement okay now let's let's take a look at the various aspects and take up one or two candles and understand this so let me just take up this candle which is during the day over here okay i'm just marking it right now with a highlighter i'm taking going to take up this candle i'm going to split it open into the smaller time frame so i can see the date over here is the 4th of october and i'm going to go to the 4th of october date and see what happened during the day if i go to the 4th of october i find that during the day as the red candle on the daily chart represents and this is the hourly chart so let me make it a 5 minute chart just to get you a better picture what i mean to say in a practical way because everything about the subject is practical right so we go on the 4th october date is 4th october this is 4th of october and during the day the price and each one of these vertical lines is a discrimination between one day and the other so the day has started over here and the day has ended over here right so during the day the price has opened and it has not really made sorry it has not really made a very big high so the price is open at a precise point which is this point if i have to really take just one second i'm getting the pen color changed yeah this is the price where it is open there is a small high right above it not a very significant high above the open the price has gone down during the day the trend has been quite strongly down during the day and the price has closed very close to the low so we see a candle on the daily chart we see a candle which looks like a pretty much rectangular big red candle so i'm going to show you what we see on the daily chart in a different box just to make it more interesting for all of you so 
So this is the 4th of October over here. And this is the 4th of October over here. So whatever I see on this candle, particularly 4th of October, I see it over here. If I split it open. So you understand the point. The most important point why candlesticks are used everywhere is because just by the look of the chart, I get a very strong idea about the sentiment and the emotional nature of the market. I get a very strong idea of the sentiment and the emotional nature of the market. Everybody agree with me? If you agree with me, please raise your hands. I get a strong idea by looking at the daily chart, what the emotional nature of the market is. It is one sided. It is strong. It is on the downside. Those who agree with me, kindly raise your hands, right? Thank you so much. We get an idea about the emotional nature of the market. And getting back to what the essence of technical analysis is, the essence of technical analysis is very simple. The assumptions behind technical analysis and the assumptions behind the fundamental analysis theories are very different. So you need to first, before you step in even one little bit, if you step into the water of technical analysis, you need to have a very, very strong idea about what the difference between the assumptions are. The assumption of a technical analyst is that the market is not moved by balance sheets and news. It is moved by emotions. They may be created by the news or may not be created by the news, but they move by emotions. Okay. The, the fundamental analysis, okay, observations, Okay, they have the even the theories behind fundamental analysis are basically on the basis of long term and a lot of small balance sheet related information related variables. And they have very tight uh, assumptions around the perfect competition. So a fundamental analyst thinks that if I think that there's a stock which is 100 rupees right now, it should go 500 rupees. So let the market cycle come over the next four, five, three, four, five, ten 10 years, then that 100 rupee stock will be priced into 500. Just because you have read the balance sheet today doesn't mean the stock has to go up tomorrow because there are many other people who are reading the balance sheet are already invested in the stock for a far longer time than you have known about the stock's name also. Right. And the assumption of a technical analyst is much simpler and we, we have to live and die by the rules and the assumptions when we understand the subject. You have to understand that the market discounts things emotionally. It discounts things on the aspect of the expectation. In 2014, uh, Prime Minister uh, C. Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister for the first time. The market actually started going up before only. Why? Because the market was discounting an expectation of a new government. Okay. So market participants will always act on emotions and these uh, and whatever emotional patterns we see on the chart. Basically, what we see on the chart is a pictorial rep a representation of the emotional patterns. And these emotions are things which people repeat. So people repeat their bad habits. People also repeat their good habits. Man is a creature of habit. In the words of George Bernard Shaw, in his very good quote, he says, man is a creature of habit. So if you see that people are consistently repeating a habit as a mass mentality, as a mass psychological tide, which influences prices, if they have a repetitive mentality, the price creation will also be rep uh, repetitive in nature. The price fluctuations and the patterns of price fluctuations will be repetitive in nature. If the patterns of price fluctuation are representative in uh, are repetitive in nature, if you trade on those fluctuations on the basis of those patterns, you can trade consistently. That is what a technical trader does, right? That is what a technical trader does. So this technical analysis has got a number of tools. Okay. I'm just trying to share with you that candlestick is one of the tools. Even Steve Nissen told us. Okay. Like for example, I'll just give you a small idea why how many tools there are because I have my website in front of me. If you go to the, uh, you know, if you go to the website, you see that uh, there are a lot of different sessions conducted on different, different technical tools. These are different concepts. 
these are all different concepts the thing is that not one candlestick or not one indicator or not one technical trading pattern not one of those things are or not one elliot wave theory pattern elliot wave pattern okay not one of those things are ideally going to give you the perfect result all the time they are all based on probabilities but if you mix if you mix and overlap see where the concepts are overlapping then you will understand how this repetitiveness is being shown to you by more than one concept so a very important aspect of technical uh, analysis is that no one tool is going to be tradable in isolation you have to understand that just alone candlesticks will not work you have to mix it up with other technical tools am i clear you have to mix it up with other technical tools right other technical tools so for example just to give you a small example that on this date on this date which is the 11th of october this is the hourly chart and i tend to mix my technical analysis of candlesticks with other technical tools so i go to the daily chart the 11th of october date is somewhere over here okay i see a candlestick pattern i will show you what is the pattern i will see okay don't worry about that we'll go into the concept from a very basic level but i tend to see that in conjunction with what is happening in other time frames with regard to other technical tools okay so a same to same candlestick which over here means that this is a buy for me or this point is a buy for me may not be in a case of another chart it depends on not just one technical tool candlesticks are not a system there are a tool right so please understand that so i just showed you the anatomy of a candle and similar to the aspect of a red candle would be the aspect of a green candle so let's just do that for a quick revision so if i imagine this green candle okay uh, if i open this green candle up and i cut it open into the hourly uh, sorry into the 5 minute chart what would it look like it would look like something like this that during the day the price is open at this level say and so this is the open there is a small wick over here compared to the body so price has gone a little lower during the day it has gone higher however it has unfolded and it has kept a little bit and closed over here so the area enclosed between the open and the close is basically the green color body which you will see and during the day it has made a high or a low this is the high and this is the low okay this is basically the extra part which is coming under this wick right this is the one which is coming under the wick and there are important aspects why this is taken like this okay we'll do that when we come to different candlestick patterns so we have understood this very idea about the candlestick that what they mean they represent the emotional nature of the market they are not a technical trading system but they are a tool which can help you in conjunction with other systems and other tools sorry uh, with if you mix and overlap these tools together then we also understood that it's not just about these green and red lines they show us the day's action overall by just looking at one candlestick similarly if i'm looking at a hourly candle it is showing me what is happening within the hour just by looking at that one hour candlestick pattern right also we understood that broadly speaking technical analysis about behavior repetition by the history of chart patterns of how charts have represented big moves after certain things have happened by the history we have understood that this is repetition and so will it follow and is likely to follow has been following since hundreds of years in the present and in the future okay now before i get into the candlestick one very important learning for all of you there are going to be different stocks and different trading tradable instruments every instrument may be a stock like a upl compared to the chart of a nifty or compared to the chart of a gold you know different different instruments 
will have different different aspects of volatility and market microstructure and liquidity and choppiness if you don't understand what i'm trying to say keep just one thing in mind that if i'm looking at a chart of a stock which is say for example like uh, mr pl okay and i open the hourly chart there is a certain kind of choppiness and volatility there is a certain kind of ups and downs it can go so many percent up and down within a day which is different from compared to when i look at the chart of nifty so the chart of nifty hourly looks like this it is much more smoother even last few months if i go right much more smoother so please keep in mind that when we are doing candlesticks it is not just about you going and uh, looking at any stock in any manner it is also about understanding the aspect of volatility and choppiness and noise the smaller time frame you will get into the smaller time frame you will get into suppose i take a stock like idea or uh, some you know something is like a volatile stock like idea and i go to the 5 minute chart i i see noise something looking like this okay probably make less out of it make less sense out of it okay uh, or if i go to a mid cap stock or if i go to something like a yes bank okay it will become slightly smoother if i go to something like a yes bank it's slightly smoother because the volatility and the tradeability and the liquidity is much different if i go to something like a nifty or a bank nifty it will become even more smooth so if you go to a smaller time frame there will be noise in the chart so if you want to do candlestick analysis and you say i want to use the one minute chart to be able to find uh, the signal for a move which is 100 points then you are not using your brains right if you are looking at the hourly chart or looking at for a signal which is giving you a certain degree of volatility or a daily chart for a certain like a 400 300 500 point move then it makes more sense so you keep accumulating your knowledge in the right direction you cannot practice in a wrong direction if you want to learn how to do sword fighting you can practice by putting the sword uh, you know using the blank sword and moving it around in the air but you can't go inside the water and move around the sword that will not help you understand sword fighting right so you have to understand the context which we will be looking at this in. similarly when we come to something like currency like a euro usd or a pound usd or a japanese japanese yen to usd or a usd inr all of these different different instruments have a different nature of movement please keep those things in mind when you are going to use this analysis number 2 we are also going to see that a particular time frame has a meaning and in technical analysis it's a very interesting thing that smaller time frames create moves in the bigger time frames and bigger time frames create pushes and thrust in the smaller time frames which is a very important aspect of candlestick it is like smaller gears which are moving bigger gears time frame is a very important concept of which is relatable to every technical analysis concept the smaller movements lead to the bigger movements right and when we are going to show you some examples as we go in the pattern by pattern the smaller movement is going to lead to the bigger movement and the bigger movement which give that pushes that thrust is going to lead to the further smaller move, smaller time frames to move okay now we are going to take up one candlestick pattern to start with and analyze it understand the meaning behind it see some examples and go ahead with making you ask questions also till now whatever i have said till now whatever i have explained is that understood very very clearly if yes kindly raise your hands if yes kindly raise your hands if it is understood very very clearly please raise your hands till now whatever i said i'm going slow because if you go to my youtube channel you see other videos which may be a little advanced this that uh, a lot of you are new faces and maybe understanding this for the first time 
I just want to go in a way where everybody understands. Okay. So if you've understood everything, please raise your hands. If you have any questions, ask a question. No problem. Then I'll go to the next aspect. Right. Okay. So let's let's move on to the first candlestick pattern which I want to discuss with all of you. It is called the hammer pattern. It is called the hammer pattern. Okay. The first candlestick pattern which we're going to understand looks like actually a hammer, a real hammer. So you see how a hammer looks like? Uh, basically, there is this tool which is having a sort of head and a, a long stick, right? It's wooden. Just like that, looks like a, a candlestick like hammer looks, right? Now, you will see over here that I have put four different kinds of hammer and all of them are valid. All of them are extremely valid. Now, if you point out what would be the difference between these different hammers, these two hammers have a small wick. These two hammers have a small wick. And what else is different among these hammers? That these two hammers have a body which is black in color, just like red in color. So the open has been over here and the close has been over here. The open has been over here and the close has been over here. And in the case of these white colored hammers, the open has been lower and then later when price has closed, it is closed at a higher level. Open and close. So what is the common thing amongst all these hammers? See, these two have a small upper wick. These two have a black body, these two have a white body. What is the thing which is common amongst all of these four cameras? I want answers, I want participation. What is it that is common amongst all of this, all of these hammers? Answers, please. Okay. I need to understand how many people are really paying attention. I need to understand how many people are really paying attention. Okay, small body, large wake, Mr. Naresh Kanwar and recovery from lower point, Rona Purwal, correct, Chaitanya Ji, lower stick, okay, so lower wake. So the true the truth is actually this only, that the, the common point amongst all these hammers, the common denominator, which makes all of them look very similar, a long lower wake, thank you, Neil D'Souza, long lower wake, and a small upper, a small body, right? All of them have a long lower wick and a small body. Long lower wick, small body. What does it mean? Now it can be very easy for us to see it like this. Why? Because we have understood the anatomy of a candlestick. So if I take this one pattern, which is hammer, and if I cut open, say for example, I take this hammer and I cut open number two. I take number two and I cut it open. How would it look like? The price has opened somewhere over here. During the day, it has made a small high, which is a small upper wick. And during the day, it has gone down, made a low, come back up and close, very close to the high, something like this. So this is the open, right? This is the high. This is the low and this is the close. If I cut open this number four hammer, or let me take number three hammer, there is no upper wick. So the price is actually, actually opened at a high, opened at a high and gone down. But within the day, how much ever it has gone down, it has done something to later come up significantly. It has not closed higher. Okay, it has not closed higher. I'm sorry, this should have been actually over here. The close should have been over here. I made a mistake while drawing number two. Okay, so I'll uh, draw it later again. But I'm drawing number four right now over here, which is this. It has not closed higher, but the close is over here. 
which creates a close which is below the open and a small high or uh, sorry uh, small high over here in case of number four in case of number three there was no high so i actually am drawing number three right so this is how it looks like what is again the common point that during this day if i cut open any of these hammers you know what it is going to come to be it is going to actually show you that during the day the market has gone down and the market has rejected the lower levels the market has rejected the lower levels is that clear the market has rejected the lower levels this much is understood that means that during the day itself when the price is opened up higher the price has gone significantly lower and then reverted back significantly the market is rejecting the lower levels we get the idea that there's a there's a thrust there's a flow on the upside all different aspects of technical analysis represent different things some aspects represent like patterns represent structure price structure candlestick represent price flow Elliott wave theory represents how the price unfolds okay so what do you think if i have a hammer what is the essence which comes out from this does it what what is the essence which comes out from a hammer bullish or bearish answers please bullish or bearish what is the essence okay I'm, I'm really happy to see the level of interaction and the sincere people over here so it is overall i'm getting an answer which is bullish yes the essence of a hammer is bullish it was so simple to understand this it is so simple to understand this so if you look at this in a book or a website the candlestick hammer means bullish it doesn't give you a really good picture why because until you don't understand the essence you will not understand what comes after this after this we are going to take a few examples of a hammer and see what are the common points it's just just not about the candlestick pattern plain simple you go and buy they are not a signal providing service they are just a technical tool and this as a technical tool helps us understand the flow of price movement right the flow of price movement so just in case okay let me just since i remember this is really in front of me right now uh, okay on the hourly chart i see that the price has broken these resistance areas in the last few weeks on the 20th september very historical day price has given a strong thrust on the upside and later after that we have corrected i'm converting this entire thing to the hourly chart and showing you that same resistance zone the resistance zone over here as you can see it's always a zone and first you the first step in technical analysis is to able to identify these important levels and zones there's a way to do it if you know very good if you don't you can check out my other videos or join my course I can help you in any way you want. Okay, so I see that this zone was a place where earlier these sellers were very very strong. Because if sellers were very strong, price would come up till this point and price would go down again. Price would come up till this zone and price would go down again, right? So every time price would come up till here, it would go down. But then there came a move which was very very strong. The buyers overtook the sellers. They pushed. the price is higher that means buyers are more confident than confident than the sellers and out of something which is called the principle of polarity now this area which was a strong resistance area where sellers were strong now is a strong support area where buyers are strong now people make this mistake the first time i actually heard the term support and resistance was when i was a very small young guy and i was going to my broker's office and i was sitting there market was falling um and i could see somebody call a client on the phone and on the uh, in the falling market the client was very tensed so this guy told the client that hey the market is going down i know but i don't think there is something to worry about i see a support area which is just there Now the problem with that guy was that the market was falling like a knife, and he was thinking that there is a support area. And I keep telling everybody one thing: don't look for supports in a falling market. 
if there is a support first let the market show you i have come to the support what am i going to do over here so if i zoom in if i zoom in and get in this area let's get over here what the market has done when it has come to a support let's go and zoom in the market has created a hammer candlestick pattern a small upper wick a small body and a long lower wick okay this is in case of nifty the hammer pattern very very well positioned very very well positioned hammer pattern later the prices from here has reversed completely reversed completely over a smaller time frame now i'm not saying this hourly chart every time you see a hammer on the hourly chart means that it is on a you know it is going to reverse the trend for me days and days but because the positioning of the hammer is important no candlestick is of any use until you don't understand the positioning say for example somebody if comes and says sir is this a hammer okay say for example the gentleman comes and says or a lady comes and says sir is this a hammer should i go and buy and to all my students i go very details with the positioning of candlesticks there is an entire uh, ch chart i give separately only to explain them the positioning this is the positioning this is a useless positioning why market has just given a distribution and the price structure and has broken this support now this support area over here is now a resistance area so do you think if i go and buy over here it is of any use i am buying in the face of a resistance and that do in a falling volatile market so this is a very very sharp down move which has started and the hammer after this makes no sense okay please understand this a hammer positioned along with another technical pattern or uh, another technical tool which is like a support this has become 100 times more effective than the hammer which would be misidentified okay so keep this thing in mind now while this was happening on the nifty there were turn arounds which were happening on pretty much a lot of other stocks okay a lot of other aspects were relatable in that case with other stocks and uh, it is not necessarily that the same hammer pattern will have to happen everywhere but and not necessarily if the nifty is going up then it has to go down etc etc but we need to understand the context of what i'm trying to say the context is very important and if we understand the context we will understand what the different time frames mean so i'll give you a small example this i shared on social media with a lot of people and keeping it very simple this is the weekly chart of yes bank okay now let's look at the hammer candlestick pattern over here a simple example of a weekly hammer now what is the aspect which is extremely visible to me which is extremely visible to me what is the aspect extremely visible to me anyone please any guesses apart from this candlestick what is the aspect which could be technical in nature which is extremely visible to me when i see this the chart mr naresh kanwar you will get a chocolate from my side mr naresh has participated very well he says volumes are extremely visible absolutely right 100% right thank you rona kowal you are also 100% right and sahal also right the entire thing is showing me that there is a strong volume that means there's a lot of participation this is happening on the weekly chart and also just to add a little bit this is in a support zone of a very very long term with the price has closed over so i get a sense what do i get a sense that the entire candlestick has some bullish essence around it so first lesson we get over here yes mr girish is also right hammer forming after a very uh, you know continued downtrend and a very significant hammer i say the first thing which we see over here is the price does not move in the next week itself i'll give you another side by side example just to give you a flavor of how differently things unfold 
the thrust is the same the unfolding is different now this is the weekly chart of britannia and this is the weekly chart of yes bank and i'm trying to make it so clear to you please understand this is a hammer on the weekly with high volumes this is the hammer on the weekly with high volumes so as a person who is looking at the weekly chart i am doing a weekly analysis so my weekly analysis holds for what kind of time frame for the next few weeks doesn't mean that in the immediate next week the price should actually start moving very strongly doesn't mean that it simply means that there is a flow there is a, the bulls have taken some charge the market has rejected the lower levels from these you know in during this part of one week and later this thrust has continued now prices don't move one sided all the time they move within trends and their trends within those trends the trends could have sideways corrections the trend could have a deep correction okay now in case of the two charts i'm going to cut open the daily chart so let me just cut open the daily chart of as bank make more easier for you just to look at one so if i cut this open this is candle is ended on the 4th of october so daily chart i'm going 4th of october is this date okay over the next few days the price is corrected a little bit and then gone higher then gone higher then gone higher so if i was supposed to trade something on the weekly chart obviously something like a out of the money call which i would be able to hold on for a significant amount period of time or if i want to trade it more precisely then i go to the daily chart i go to the hourly chart i see what the breakouts are and i play out those breakouts very very smartly because the bigger time frame is supporting me if the bigger time frame is having a thrust then thrust is building up movement in the smaller time frame you see the relationship is very very clear now after i go a little deeper i see a candle over here which looks like a hammer but i would not categorize it as a very strong hammer because it could have had a smaller body but the essence is the similar thing that you have got one candle and another candle in a series of four candles where there's a lower wick and we also see when i split it open to the further hourly chart that there is a significant resistance area when the breakouts are happening then i go and take a long position or if i want to trade the weekly chart then my stop loss is wider so i can use a call to trade that or i can wait for the things to be shown to me in the smaller time frame now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take another example of a similar category but on the daily chart and the hourly chart and i want you all to participate with me right and if you have a uh, thing in front of you like a um and you have like a chart in front of you any kind of platform to use the chart is fine completely fine okay now let's look at the chart of tech mahindra okay and most of these are the trades i have also shared publicly sometimes so you know when people ask me what is your secret sauce there is no secret sauce it is just a constructive structured way of learning and understanding and practice and application okay so this as you can see uh, when tech mahindra had gone down over here it came around this level which was very important earlier you can see the lowest blue and white line these points right now i'm zooming in and this is the daily chart so i'm zooming in and i'm showing you what happened on the daily chart what what is this pattern on the daily chart what do we see over here this is a hammer pattern and what is the common again point which i saw compared to the previous one number one it is at a support level number two this hammer is showing me again a significant high volume perfect now the same thing thank you mr nareesh again now the same thing which i saw in relationship with the weekly and daily i am now into seeing the weekly and hour uh, daily and the hourly so here the bigger time frame is the daily time frame and if you've got a charting software in front of you or a charting platform you can go to the hourly chart and see what happened over here in the daily oh, sorry in the hourly chart right so the candle gave a thrust 
it is telling me that yes i have i have most likely taken a support it is telling me until it, if it comes to a support and does nothing it is of no use to me because it can easily break that support if it's a downtrend why not can it break this in fact in a downtrend i should be looking for breaking of supports also but i see that there is a development on the chart where there is a hammer now do i act on it immediately no i have to look at the risk to reward on a very logical basis the the loss or the stop loss i can keep is this low and if it doesn't suit me to have such a big stop loss of 20 28 rupees on the stock roughly 28 rupees on the stock okay if it doesn't suit me to have such a big stop loss i am a short term trader i will wait keeping in mind that the tone is bullish in the next 2 to 3 days i start getting a trade with a very precise entry you can also go to my telegram channel and check out i have shared this precise entry now this precise entry is there and i can see consolidation in the hourly i have combined my knowledge of support resistance candlesticks chart patterns on the hourly and obviously trading psychology will be there and aspects of money management like risk to rewards so i wait for the right setup out of which a very important candlestick point has come up which is a part of our major learning today so candlestick is used in conjunction with all other these aspects and again the same thing this was a previous resistance which was the first potential target then the price came to the zone came down this have become now strong supports price came up again and later when it broke this resistance it has gone higher so moved around here a bit and gone higher right the same thing i'm showing to you on a stock like hindustan unilever now this is the weekly chart of hindustan unilever and on this zone i saw that the price has come down and made something like a hammer Okay. this is the zone this is the weekly okay this is like a hammer obviously it has got a upper wick it is not a very small lower wick but is my essence captured and is the is the zone captured very well yes now i go to the daily to see what has happened at these lows and daily i see another candlestick pattern which i'll show you in a few moments and then i see consolidation so always understand this like in case of tech mahindra we saw the candlestick patterns are not necessarily reversal from bullish to bearish sometimes they are just shifting gear so from here it was going down it shifted the gear to neutral and now it is going up so you have to understand this gear shifting aspect price reversal always does not mean up to down or down to up i can show you many more examples with the same kind of ideology and same kind of unfolding is this very very clear how many of you have seen this kind of analysis for the first time please raise your hands how many of you never perceived candlesticks in this way how many of you just saw red and green lines and now feel clear about it i'll be happy to know right thank you so much okay i get this okay thank you nitin ji uh, it's so sweet of you to say this nice way of saying it is yes. it, it is simplified yes and i'm trying to tell that no matter how or what education you have done so the world and the society around us has always overrated education and segregated people into according to their board exam results etc which is basically bullshit which has no implication on their confidence in their career and especially in business and any kind of education is understandable practically applicable by each and every person only if we are using and we are willing to use our correct focus and energy towards it everything in the world is very simple to understand we make it complicated right so this was the hammer pattern i hope everyone understood well and i will move on to show you 
another candlestick pattern which is very very similar to the hammer pattern okay it is very very similar to the hammer pattern just that it is the bearish cousin of the hammer pattern so what was the dominant aspect in terms of the hammer what what out the true meaning of the hammer the true meaning of the hammer was got out by one thing which was the lower wick right that was the true meaning of the hammer right now where does the positioning happen please don't start looking for hammers in the middle of the air even if you see them working out their specific things in a small webinar i have not put all the details but i have put enough for you to develop an understanding and go ahead with it okay there are other multiple candlestick patterns i mean i take two sessions my course i take four to five hours on candlestick so it's a very long learning but whatever we are doing over here is also very clearly given to you so you can apply it but you keep in mind the positioning how i have shown you the positioning should be critically judged it should not be after a sharp down move okay preferably supported by a support zone or a potential support zone there are other potential support zone also so probably we'll take up a webinar some day only on support and risk and see what the potential support zone is right let's understand this now shooting star this is the bearish cousin of a hammer this is the bearish cousin of a hammer everyone with me right now raise your hands if you are with me this is the bearish cousin of a hammer everyone can understand thank you everyone can understand this very simple very simple what is the core essence behind it the core essence behind it is that during the day the market oh, oops change the pen color no the market open say if i take up this red candle the market opened during the day it went higher and within the day it actually shaved off all the gains and closed lower you find the red color body like this so the close and the low is together or it could be a negligible lower wick also it would have been acceptable the open is here and the high is over here what is the essence behind it essence is that the market is rejecting the higher levels the market is rejecting the higher levels so if the market is rejecting the higher levels what do we understand we understand that during the day all this action that has happened has shown me that in a very drastic way the market has gone up and then gone down it could may possibly be that we are now getting bearishness kicking in it smells of bearishness right and what are the different types of unfolding we saw in case of a hammer number 1 we saw that the hammer either unfolds in a way where it immediately moves so there is a thrust and the immediate movement in the next few candles or in case of a hammer also we saw like yes bank on weekly we saw man but the next one week two weeks it took some time it consolidated it went sideways it corrected it shifted gears and then it moved so if we understand the similar aspects are applicable to even this case to even this case similar aspects are clearly applicable and let's see some examples now right let's see some examples i'll try to say uh, let's take some uh, you know re recent example okay so today only uh, if i'm not if i remember correctly and i don't mean to say that all of you should stay at a smaller time frame or anything but i'm just giving you a fair idea about how these things are happening okay uh, a, a thrust those who are into scalping those who want to trade short term probably trade intraday you know aspects like these can be very important for you i'll show you some other examples as we go in different types of candlesticks further ahead but say for example this this is called a shooting star pattern now the problem with this placement is the problem this placement is not ideal why because 
the placement just like in case of a hammer it should be after a short term or a decent low this should be after a extended high it cannot come after a short term high so there is some protective layer which is already here some protective cushion so you cannot understand the flow of the shooting star should always take this price down you can't see it like that you have to take it in a different light and that is that there has been a candle like this and immediately there has been a thrust which has gone so to some extent the movement has happened but this is not the ideal placement this is just to show you that how long you should hold on to a trade but i know this trade is going to be short lived that i can trade it only if i am a scalper in intraday i don't want to take a positional trade on this basis alone right that would be senseless so i need to keep these ideas in mind while i'm doing what i'm doing right so let's go to say for example over here like similarly over here i cannot call this a, a shooting star because it's an overall uptrend and it's the middle of uptrend it's not even at the end of uptrend or something right so i cannot call this a shooting star although it may look like a shooting star but the positioning does not allow us to call whereas when i'm looking at uh, aspect like a overall downtrend has started right and i see that this shooting star is showing me a bearish essence and there supports over here even these supports which were earlier defined by one candle which was a hammer this is the hourly chart and now we are breaking so what i see over here helps me to understand the thrust which has led to this break now this is happening in the hourly on the date of september 16 17 september okay so there is a fall which has happened immediately the next day morning has been a great position a great short selling idea okay and the same kind of thing if i was to tell you in case of daily when uh, a few months back actually uh, over here i saw two shooting stars back to back now their positioning was not after a long uptrend but there was positioning zone was very ideal and there were two shooting stars so i can see that the bearish essence is building up so suppose i see a hammer okay if i see a hammer and i see two hammers back to back suppose i see two hammers back to back what does it mean that you know the price if i cut these open then the price at some level is trying to gather the steam to go and go up and there's a resistance area probably it can go up similarly the price over here is gathering the steam in this case gathering the steam to go and break these so when these levels are broken there is a significant downside in the coming few days so as i said the candlesticks are allowing us to see what they are allowing us to see the flow and if i match this analysis up with what had happened in the weekly chart what is the date over here 3 5 that is the 3rd of may now let's go to the weekly chart the weekly chart over here okay uh there is something called a hanging man pattern which exists so i'm not going to go into that since it's not a part of our today's area but if i combine it weekly chart analysis it still works out to be the similar kind of thing right so these two hammers uh, sorry these two shooting stars i'm sorry these two shooting stars have an implication not immediately but i mean it, in this case they have it immediately but even if you don't find it immediately your understanding of the price mechanism and what it possibly do is high so some of my students were short from these levels whereas some of my students were actually going short aggressively when it broke but they had an eye out that this is a possibility they had an eye out for it everything in candle everything in technical analysis is only about perception your risk management your profit taking your trading your way of looking at the markets perception towards the charts everything is about developing an individual perception i personally look forward to give people a variety of concepts which are enough for you to uh, trade successfully and consistently and i give a broader perception so that it helps you build your way of looking at it and i like to take the reality in question so when you see me uh, talking about you know talking about the aspect like a hammer should not come after a vertical move a vertical downfall had happened over here on the daily chart and if somebody comes and tell me sir this is a hammer 
I will say, please, you have not done your studies properly. This is not a hammer. This is a very sharp down move. And within this very sharp down move, I don't know how many of you remember this day, it was a market mayhem. And after this move, there's a pullback which is happening within the day. That is why it looks like a hammer. It is not a hammer. It is a pullback in a downtrend which is happening within the day. Same thing goes for the budget 2018. It is not a hammer. It is a pullback which is happening in the day where there's a significant downside which has started. Okay, so if I see something like that, my understanding of candlestick is that, okay, if it is not a hammer, then what it is? It is something alongside the bearish. If it is something alongside the bearish, then let me wait for bearish triggers and you find bearish triggers later with other concepts coming in the hourly and the daily chart. Same thing, a few days back, uh, a student of mine traded just died. Okay, there's a significant down move in just died. Now, he told me that this, these areas were hammers. There was a well-defined support because of this hammer. Because this hammer is for me, I know that the, the buyers are strong. But if this zone breaks, I also know that there can be weakness. So the gentleman actually went short on this day. And again, this particular candle was perceived to be a pullback in the downtrend. In fact, there's a, something looking like a shooting star over here. Within an ongoing downtrend. So it is not that shooting star has to work out immediately. But after the shooting star, two candles were there, three candles were there sideways, and then it broke. And many of you who have followed this talk know how significantly down it went in one day, about 50, 60 rupees down, more than that actually, or possibly. Okay. So if you see it, uh, even if I take the break from 652 zone and see the low of the day at 606, it is a strong, strong movement, a significant movement. Later when the price comes back up, now these resistances, now these supports have become resistances. Now earlier, where the buyers were strong at this point, now sellers have taken over. So buyers were strong till here, sellers have taken over, sellers are strong now. Now when the price comes here, sellers are still strong. How do I get the evidence? I get it through the shooting star. So it will help me understand the undertone of the market phase, how the levels are playing out, how other technical tools are playing out, etc. So I get this. These are common examples. These are repetitive. I, I can remember so many times after we've seen these examples. Say for example, look at Sun Pharma in 2016. There was a huge move on the downside. It broke across different time frames. After this huge move on the downside, I remember because I was trading it, I was short from this day. I remember that after this move, there was a significant pullback. But do you understand the essence? The essence is this, which was a support area earlier. A significant support area is now resistance. And what did you require? You required one hammer Oh, sorry, one shooting star. I'm sorry again. <laughs> I just iterated the wrong candlestick. This is one shooting star over here, which could lead you to understand that yes, this move is likely to end. There is bearishness likely to kick in. I take two days of rest, and the third day it goes down significantly. So there's this gear shifting thing happening over here as well. So when you perceive, you have to perceive in conjunction with all kinds of other technical aspects. That is when the technical analysis of any kind of concept brings out a better meaning to you. Similar, again, look at this. I mean, if you see there's a sharp vertical downtrend, please don't take these as hammer. There's a sharp vertical downtrend over here. And if you say this is a hammer, so no, this is not a hammer. In fact, this is a strong move. Within the day, the price has come down. So sometimes it is better to actually wait after one or two days after a significant candlestick has been formed. If you do that, you might actually get a better result in some market phases. In some market phases, you're very confident about the placement of the candlestick. So you can go ahead and see the other aspects and go ahead and pull the trigger like that. Like for example, the next pattern which you're going to go into, okay, is going to be so till now, what have we done? We have done shooting star and we have done hammer, right? Again, since we were on the ultra tech 
a chart. I will just show you that this is a shooting star. This is bringing out the shooting star essence, and today has been a significant down move in case of Ultra Tech. Okay, but keeping that part aside, I'm going to come back to this chart later. So till now we have done hammer, till now we have done shooting star, and we have understood that these are the two candlesticks. These are the two candlesticks which are related and give the maximum significance due to the wick, due to the size of a lower or upper wick, which is long. In case of a single candlestick pattern, a significant wick mattered. Now, I repeat, this is a single candlestick pattern, one candlestick. Now let's take up a double candlestick pattern. That means you need two candles to actually complete this entire pattern. Similarly, there are triple candlestick patterns. Similarly, there are more actually quadruple candlestick patterns also, which are different. So our scope of today is to do with the single candlestick pattern, which are of four types. And the other two, these two are more significant. So I taught this. Now moving on to the second one, double candlestick pattern. Bullish engulfing, we're going to take up the first one. And then we're going to take up the bearish engulfing. Okay. The bearish engulfing. So let's start with the bullish engulfing. Let's understand the simple aspect. Now, here we see two candles back to back. In this case, the positioning is after a significant uh, extended downtrend. When I say extended downtrend, I mean that downtrend which is not super sharp. Okay. Again, the similar aspects of being supported by a trend line, being supported by a support zone, all these will be important here as well. Is everyone with me? I'm about to explain this. Kindly raise your hands if you're with me. Till now, everything understood. Any questions, please ask. Thank you. Thank you. I see. Any kind of epiphany, any kind of... Uh, doubt or any kind of thing you want to share feel free to do so today uh, specifically with the candlestick i'm extremely passionate about candlesticks and go to high details in my course but today specifically i wanted to take this because many people ask me so what about candlestick and then show them that there's a video on candlestick already on my youtube you can check that one out also but today i wanted to take it from very basic levels so the people don't end up thinking it's just about red and green lines it has a meaning, it has an essence, and it is a tool, right? Anyway, so let's look at this. Bullish engulfing pattern happens at the end of an extended move. Double candlestick pattern. The first candle is a red candle, a red candle which could be significant in size of the body. This is the red candle, right? I'm sorry, this is the red candle. And after that, you see a green candle following this and it is basically looking as if that the green candle is literally eating up the green candle is literally eating up the red candle it is engulfing it completely so what is happening that this is the close the price gaps down this gap down may be small maybe it's very big or very no not very big it could be a little small gap down Okay, gapping down basically to show that if the price is closed at this point, then there are much lower levels the next day seen and then buyers come in and they have pushed the prices higher to a great extent such that the price is actually closed above the body of the red candle. I'll explain again. This is the body of the red candle. This has been engulfed by the body of the green candle. It is hugging this candle. So frankly speaking, what is happening? That all these sellers who were holding their positions as the market was going down, they're holding their short positions here as well. Prices go down and enough buying comes in through new parties or through people covering their shorts or whatever it is, or through participation of completely trend followers or whatever it is. And when this is happening, the price is going up during the day. When it is gone during up during the day, it is closed 
above the body of this candle. Now, there are different authors who say different things in terms of some authors say and suggest that this entire candle should be engulfed by the body of the green candle. Okay. And some authors say just the body should be engulfed by the body of the green candle. In either of these cases, in either of these cases, as long as the, in my understanding, as long as the essence comes out, it is fine, not an issue. As long as the essence is significant, it is supported by volume, supported by support zone, supported by trend lines, supported by a momentum indicators or a moving average or, a, a, you know, different, different aspects of technical tools, then it is fine. So, a bullish engulfing pattern. Simple to understand. Now, if I have to draw it in a way where if I have to draw two days back to back. So on day one, the price is showing a relatively smaller range. The price has gone down, just closed. The next day, the price is opened here and significantly gone and closed above over here. So overall, if I have to bifurcate these two days, I'll do it with this yellow highlighter right here. The second day is actually significantly taking off the price action of the first day. So the bulls are dominating over here. What is the essence? Bullish or bearish? What is the essence? Come on, everyone. I know it's nighttime. Maybe some people are sitting with their dinner while watching this. Some people are hungry. Some people are sleepy, could be. But, or maybe you've just had dinner. Okay, thank you. A lot of answers. The essence is bullish. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, all of you. Very nice participation today. So the essence is bullish. Now, let's look at the same aspects. What did I say step by step? What did I say step by step? That it will not be, it will not be just about the candles. It will also be about the supporting evidences. And the second will be, how do we let it unfold? How soon or how later could the result be shown to me? Okay. And for that, I'll open this candlestick. Uh, I'll open this chart again, which is ultra tech cement. So this is the daily chart of ultra tech cement. Now, uh, those who have learned from me, it will be very easy for you who have done the course with me, etc., or are, are in the current batch, etc. But the first topic I teach is to identify important levels. And to keep it a very short and simple explanation, a lot of strong buyers had come in over here. The prices has been cemented by good volumes. These zones are important. These zones are important. Okay. To keep it simple, these zones are important. Now at this zone, the price has significantly gone down. And then I see a candle, which is a green candle, has engulfed this red candle completely. So what is this? It is a bullish engulfing pattern. Now one may say that, sir, there's a very sharp movement. As I said, the general nature of the volatility of different stocks is different. So keeping that in mind, I have chosen this to be a valid bullish engulfing pattern. And while I was tracking this stock, I was also tracking the hourly chart, which happened on this day. So if you look at the bullish engulfing pattern, the red candle happened on the 7th of October and on the 9th of October, the green candle happened. It was a holiday perhaps. So this is 7th October, sorry, this is the 7th of October. This is the 9th of October. So 7th of October price has gone down that the red candle and this, which is, I'm sorry, I'm just changing the pen color. Mm, yeah, let's take purple. This is the red candle, and this is the 9th October green candle. So the engulfing has happened completely. We got the candlestick pattern which we are required to get. And what did we learn? The prices don't move just at one go all the time, they many times move in trends, and they many times have corrections. So actually, on the 10th of October, there's been a correction. On the 11th of October, there has been some more sideways movement. And finally, on the 14th of October, it has thrusted above the, uh, significantly above this entire candlestick zone. So on the daily chart, it looks something like this. One day, two days of sideways to slightly positive movement and then thrust towards further ahead of the trend, right? In the same direction of the trend, further ahead. Now, when I cut it open in the hourly, I saw that along with this double candlestick pattern, 
as I said, you mix the different concepts along with this double candlestick pattern. I can significantly see a cup and handle pattern, which is this. And those who don't know cup and handle pattern, then you can check out some of my other YouTube videos. You can you can join my course if you feel like. That's a different thing, but I'm just trying to say that you need to know all aspects of technical analysis or most aspects of technical analysis in order to combine these aspects. So the cup and handle pattern has a breakout zone over here. And after this is broken out significantly, um, we see that the extension of the move has happened. So what could be my entry point? The entry point obviously could be in the correction. Well, the engulfing was made by this time. The entry point could have been any time in the correction or as this move further had within this candle or after this candle also, depending on how, how I see my risk to reward and how I see my time frame of trading, right? So I have combined the price structure with the candlestick pattern. Understood? Is that understood? Is that understood? Combining the price structure with the candlestick pattern. It's simple, but simple things come difficult to people. It is the simple which becomes more complicated for people. Everything in life as well as in trading is actually very simple. The student, I always say this, I read it somewhere. I say the, the lessons are simple. The student is complicated. Because, because when you're trading, you have to let go of your inhibitions that in the past, this happened with me, that happened with me. You have to let go of those inhibitions. And if you are able to let go of these inhibitions and see things in a fresh manner, that is why I love those lines said by Farhan Akhtar. Har lamhe se tum milo, kholi apne baaye. Har pal ek naya sama dekhe ne kahe. Right. If you see every moment and every day in the market as something very fresh and use the practical approach of technical principles, it is a probability game. Not all trades will be right. You will have to have your stop loss and money management. But you will go further ahead, many more steps. Many more steps ahead you will go. Always keep this in mind. Never ever feel down because of anything. And always understand that maybe you have learned a lesson, maybe you have made a mistake, but it has brought you one step closer to where you want to be, to where you were meant to be. Okay. So never find that demotivating point. So keeping it quick, going to the bearish engulfing. So just like the bullish engulfing, I spoke about the fact that we also have something called bearish engulfing, which is a bearish cousin of actually the bullish engulfing pattern. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm going to stay to the examples because we are having limited time for today. So this is bearish engulfing. The red candle is actually engulfing, heating up the green candle completely. Right. So this happens at the end of an up move. And this again, what did I say in the very beginning? The, the nature of candlesticks is that it shows me the emotional nature of the market. So this, let's look at this bearish engulfing on a stock PNB, Punjab National Bank. You see this bearish engulfing had happened. It took the uh, two to three days of action, not just one, but two to three days. That is why I took this example. So you can have a bearish engulfing this big, this big, <clears throat> excuse me. So I see what happened on the hourly chart after that, after the bearish engulfing, which was on the 5th of November, this is the 5th of November. There was a one day, not much movement and the third day onwards there was movement. So this is one day, not much movement, which is a small correction and then third day, more movement. So you understand what time frame you're studying, what time frame you're expecting the movement in and how it is unfolding. Okay. So similarly, I think uh, SBI too, in this case, had a bearish engulfing. Should have been after an extended move, not denying that. 
but I did not uh, perceive it that much either over here. But when it later showed me sing signals at this point, I found it to be a very attractive uh, selling thing. So according to the probabilities, even this was a potential sell, but I just was more bearish at this point and looking for downsides, which later I got also like that. But this is how it works. So some very interesting example, Yes Bank. So as the journey has been on Yes Bank on the downside this year, see the top, a top of this is a bearish angle. Right at the top. Extended move. Price is going higher and I know I've not done gaps with you, gaps I've done with some students who are here, maybe some old students who are here in the previous batch. So this is a significant resistance point. There's a bearish engulfing. Now look at the build up, three to four days downside, further up move sideways, further down move, pull back, further down move, etc. So the build up is there. Later in the downtrend, when there is some pullback, like over here, I see another bearish single thing. Just look at the beauty. Just look at one concept happening again in the next few weeks. Beauty, bearish single thing. Now this bearish single thing is not showing me some sideways movement. Actually, if I cut open these three days, it is showing me that after the bearish single thing, there is some deep correction on the upside and then later price is moving on the downside. But still, the essence of this bearish single thing also true, holds true, number one. Number two, it follows through after a few days. So some gear shifting has happened and then it has gone down. So just so beautiful. Just look at this. Significant, clear and absolutely to the point practical. This bearish engulfing, right? some pullback and then further down. And so how would I find how the price will unfold? Well, with one concept, you can find one aspect later with much fuller knowledge you can know more immediate triggers and markets are like that you have to give them some room and space to breathe don't expect everything immediately don't come up with those expectations in the market because we have to get close to the reality okay i might get a trade which will give me a movement immediately okay but at the same time i have to also keep in mind that it is not an everyday thing of immediate entries and all. If I have to be humble, I am not controlling the market. I am controlling my emotions. That should be enough. Right. Anyone else? Any questions? So, aspects understood. No questions, no doubts. If you have any, please ask. If you have any questions, please ask. Just feel free. Uh, Neil, I'm sorry to to restore the sanctity of the purpose of today. I would not be doing that. That is why I have stopped giving any kind of live sessions also. Because I feel that the sanctity of learning should be protected. And I'm sorry if I disappoint you, but I will not be there every day in order to actually show you, you know, uh, give you every answer, right? So we have to keep those things in mind. Right? Any other questions? Okay, I'm getting a question. How long is your course? Um, the course I teach is a 15 session course. And obviously, uh, we can get in touch with my team. Uh, you know, I'll just show you this. These are the contact details. These are the contact details. One second. Uh, so if you go to technically and then if you go to what's why is it not moving? Okay, Chrome is not okay. What is wrong with this? Okay, here we go. Yeah. So if I go to the contact us section, you can go to my team, contact them on this number. There are many other relevant candlestick patterns like a hanging man, the inverted hammer, the evening star, the morning star, 
and a lot of those uh, like a doji a spinning top so within the within the periphery of today's time and agenda i have kept it limited but in my course i teach all the candlesticks over two sessions long sessions two to two and a half hour sessions we have you can check out more about my teaching style and the concepts on youtube there's nothing wrong with taking learning in youtube it's just that when you come to the course it is far more structured and after your course is ending we have got something called the inner circle group where i have meeting with all the students almost every month we have a meeting even from the day one the first batch okay so this is the contact detail and you don't have to pay anything extra for being in the inner circle group if you go to the testimonial section of our website you will see how what students have to say those who have taken up this course what they have to say about the course you can see that and apart from the testimonials which are shared on the website um, i keep sharing the sort of profits etc which students have made on various occasions even though that really is just an inspiration point the more important point is so these are the testimonials but the more important point is to see not just the aspects but also see what is significant in the learning and what is significant in the improvement and what is significant in the consistency and the value uh, addition in the long term for these students i don't really believe in giving out any kind of calls or premium services simply because it loses the purpose of giving something for the long term so kept it that simply put you know this is the agenda and you can check out the testimonials you can check out various other instagram posts etc and the fees is 15000 rupees so this was about my course it's all up there you can just go and check i don't need to show each and everything a lot of people know about me and it is the prerogative and the course values is to provide something with long term see if i charge you say 3000 rupees a month and i say i'll give you a premium service for calls you would rather pay 15000 rupees for the course and learn something for a lifetime because you cannot trade on borrowed conviction you cannot trade on borrowed conviction many people who believe they can i have never seen somebody get very rich by following other people's advice that is the truth so number 1 that and number 2 the sanctity of learning and doing something really brings out the capitalization of your skill of your growth which is very internal as well as external and the money is a by product it sounds very easy to say but really if you really go into trading in a way which is well articulated segregated with practicality and your trades need to be limited your trades need to be when the time is right then you will understand that the impulsive nature or a laggard nature of holding on to a losing trade all those laziness all those indiscipline things are not the space and you, these are not the emotions you should be playing out in the market you should be actually a proper business person and if at all you have to play out any emotion it should be the passion towards the market towards the strategy not just about the money because you will have to let those trades unfold you will have to be indifferent to the m to m for some time i'm more than sure all of you have faced these difficulties but if you're not training your mind your mind itself is not trained actually to perceive markets and trading in that way we are trained primitively in a fight or flight mode in greed in in greed or fear most people just get swayed away so the training i provide is just not to train you in a superficial way it is to train you in a deeper way also that is what the prerogative is it has been a four and a half years like four years and five months something like that technically sorted has been there 
it has helped a lot of people turn their destiny around completely with the markets and it is helping people to do so even today on that note i will take your leave it was a lovely beautiful evening i had with all of you nothing gives me more satisfaction to see people who are so ambitious so clear and so passionate about what they have chosen to come up for and the company of all of you and such people has raised my standards for conducting whatever i do with equal amount of passion ambition and it is always this exchange process which goes on if you need anything you can contact even if you don't want to join the course just talk to my team clear my uh, clear your doubts have a conversation with me set up a call with me feel free to do so until then until next time i will take your leave thank you very much for all the appreciation i've just got on messages just now thank you very much take care keep attending keep uh, showing yourself up uh, in these kind of events and webinars and i hope to cross roads with you sometime or the other some way or the other thank you all it was a lovely evening and i also need to grab some dinner now because i'm getting hungry so i'll just take your leave and thank you it was very motivating i'm getting a lot of thank you messages thank you all it was really beautiful Thank you very much. Take care. Have fun. Goodbye. And enjoy. Thank you.